Hey everybody, my name is Ashton Duncan, and in this video we're going to talk a little bit um, about hay in a broad sense. So, there's many different kinds of hay to start out with, from fescue to alfalfa, and um, probably the most common types that we personally grow um, is timothy, which has a long head, it's kind of a good defining characteristic about it. Um, it's an excellent horse hay and a high quality cow hay, and um, that's the basics on that. Second uh, most popular one that we grow is orchard grass, which is um, a pretty popular hay that's grown in Virginia. It's an excellent cow hay, a good horse hay. Um, it's typically the first cutting is taken off like in May. It's preferably done before it comes to a complete head. And then um, the second cutting is pretty different than the first cutting. The first cutting is pretty stimmy, um, but the second cutting is not at all stimmy. And it's a better feed with good nutrition, typically for horses, and it's a very high quality feed for cattle if it's baled correctly. Um, then the third one that we probably grow the most of um, is alfalfa, which is really high in protein. And it's used for all animals. Um, it's an excellent feed, especially for horses, cattle, sheep, and goats. Um, it's pretty versatile. It can be chopped. It can be wet-wrapped as silage, and it can be made into dry hay. So that's just kind of a brief rundown of, you know, just a couple examples of types of hay. Um, and now we'll kind of transition into, you know, growing and harvesting. So like any, any plant, you know, you got to take care of it. You have to have adequate water, adequate nutrients, um, and just just so you have a better yield and a better quality product. Um, most popular nutrients that you're going to need are probably nitrogen, potassium, and phosphorus, which is key into um, growing of any kind of crop, basically. So you're going to apply that um, during the growing process, and once it reaches almost maturity you're gonna mow it and so for grasses you're gonna cut it like three to four inches above the ground and then one two inches for alfalfa and so like I briefly mentioned um, you're gonna harvest before the grass comes to a head and the reason that is after that seed head forms um, lignin which is a ch uh, chemical in that uh, grass it becomes present and animals can't really digest that very well. So you don't want that. That just leaves a whole bunch of, you know, inefficiency for your operation. And so when you do your hay, it's going to be uh, like a 20% moisture. And so then we get into um, harvest equipment. And there's a whole lot of stuff that you have to do in order to have a successful hay harvest. And so, obviously, you're going to need to prep because it's a, it's a pretty important process and everything needs to go well. So, your equipment needs to be greased on all moving parts and you need to expect for safety. So, make sure all your belts and all your chains are attached and lubricated properly. And you got to make sure that your equipment is hitched correctly in the proper form. And so, always have a fire extinguisher on hand because that... Uh, Fires can break out pretty easily. Um, so the first step in hay harvest is going to be mowing. And so most farmers today are going to use a disc vine. And so there are discs with knives on the bottom that cut the grass. And depending on the disc vine, um, it'll either have flails, which are finger-like projections like in V's that kind of break up the grass a little bit, and uh, that kind of gets some of the water out. Or, excuse me, it'll have rollers, which will bring the hay up into the machine and then press the water out. Um, and those are kind of more so for alfalfa. And so that kind of just um, speeds up the drying process because the drying process is very important when it comes to hay. Um, so after you get your hay all mowed up, um, the second step, um, if needed, is tedding. And so that turns the hay out, uh, turns it over to dry, and it spreads it out to dry uh, so it can dry equally. And um, 
I had a personal interview with the farmer back home, and um, he said it can also reseed your ground after you mow it down. But like I said earlier, after your hay comes to maturity, it's kind of inefficient uh, because of that lignin present in the grass. Um, so I probably wouldn't recommend that. But if you want to save some money and your hay is you're not really using it for anything important, that's also an option. Um, and if there is no need to TED, then you shouldn't because it's a waste of time and it's a waste of money because you have fuel and labor and valuable time that's being wrapped up in something that doesn't need to be done. Um, so after you TED, um, you rake, which is the third step. And so this is the process that makes the windrows so you can bale it. Um, the windrows should be wide so air can still blow through them to dry it down more. But not so wide that your baler pickup can't get it all because that wastes a lot of a lot of valuable product as well. But after you get your wind rows down and everything's dry enough, um, you're gonna go into the fourth step, which is actually baling it. And so um, you're gonna run the wind rows through the baler. And so there's the baling. It just you like you when you think about it, you're like oh you're just driving a tractor. With your baler, but it's made way more com complex than that. Um, you don't want to go too fast, and you don't want to go too slow. Um, you need to make sure that your bales are the same size on both sides. Like watch the monitor to ensure consistency, and um, you got to keep an eye and ear on that baler to ensure, um, like if a bearing goes out um, or something, like a belt breaks, you can stop before the machine breaks or it catches on fire. Like, whenever you least expect it, it's going to break all the time. So, it's good to be prepared. So, after you get all your bales made, you are going to store it. And so, hay can be stored in many ways. It can be baled wet and stored in long tubes, which um, in silage is the hay to make baleage, which is 40% moisture, fun fact. Um, it can be baled dry in net wrap or in twine, and it can also be made into squ uh, smaller square bales as versus a round bale, um, which are approximately like 40 pounds, or in big square bales, which are as heavy as a round bale. And so, um, excuse me again, um, it can be stored in barns and hay sheds, but most commonly it's stored outside using net wrap. Um, and net wrap is a good option because it ensures that you lose as little hay as possible. Um, because if you use if you use twine, um, the hay will tend to rot off and you'll not have as much to feed, which is really important in the winter time. And so um, feeding, you know, here feeding typically happens in the winter time when pasture conditions change. You know, you run out of grass and grass doesn't grow very well in the winter time. And so you'll get your bales or your square bear your square bales, and uh, you can roll them out for livestock and um, I was doing some research for this project and I actually found a really cool article and it says, um, you know, there's an added benefit for, you know, rolling out these bales on this ground because it helps to have um, higher nutrient concentration than non-fed ground and that's due to uh, common sense uh, organic mat more organic matter is uh, introduced to your soil so that makes it a higher quality ground and it's good for you because you can have a better product. And so. Um, that's kind of the general um, general aspect of that. And so there are some issues within haymaking. Um, obviously, rain. You can't make rain or you can't make hay with wet grass. And so um, rain obviously makes hay wet, but it's different from making in silage hay because when it rains on it, it's wet from the outside as opposed to the inside of the grass. It's a huge difference. And so when it gets wet, mold is a result, and that's another big issue. So if dry hay is made too wet, um, it'll mold upon storage. And if it's stored inside, it can actually heat up and potentially cause a fire. And so um, aside from that, you can also lose some animals because it, mold will make them sick and potentially kill them. And so another thing the mold does is, you know, it makes a very low quality product, so you can't um, sell it very well, or if you even sell it at all. Um, and so this can be controlled by wrapping your bales, 
or, you know, storing them out of the elements, because that's, you know, the best way to probably do that. And so then another uh, big issue with haymaking is lodging, which is when, like, wind or rain uh, can knock down your, your grass before you mow it. And so, like, if you have a good stand of hay and it gets wet with wind blowing, it can potentially blow down your hay. And so that can knock, knock it down and make it extremely hard to mow, like really hard. And it'll take extra time and extra effort. And, um, you know, there's a you can do this, but it's just a pain. Um, you would have to come at the hay with the blown side down so your equipment can pick it up. Uh, so, um... Just a little insight into um, some of the equipment that we have. Um, there are many types of balers, and they're made by different companies and different models. Um, we typically use a New Holland BR7060 uh, silage special with net wrap, and then that's for our round balers. And for our square baler, we have a 348 John Deere uh, with a kicker. And so all of these balers have, you know, the same principle. Um, they take up the hay with the teeth, and the hay is fed through the baler, and then it's wrapped to form either the round bale, um, or then for the square bales, it's brought in by the teeth as well to form little cakes or leaves, and then those are pressed tightly against each other, and uh, that forms a sturdy bale using the twine, and then it's kicked into the wagon that's behind the, the baler. And so these are customizable. Um, you can have different pickups, different, you know, net wrap or twine, different size bales, um, which are dimensions and weight or anything else. So, that's it. <laughs>